have to any longer uh, co-pay or pay for very simple preventative procedures, whether they be a physical checkup or important screenings uh, that the elderly need, and expand home and community-based services to keep seniors in their homes instead of nursing homes. And that's why we're so proud of this legislation. The speaker spoke at Yale with Rosa DeLauro about two weeks ago about the importance and the significance and the impact of this legislation on women. And we're going to hear from Carolyn Como, who will further explain that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Carolyn Como, I live in Asheville, North Carolina. I was diagnosed with breast cancer three years ago at age 45. Um, I got the diagnosis call as my husband was on an important job interview um, for a position that would allow us to have good, high-quality benefits. Thank heaven, he got those, thank heaven he got those benefits in that job. However, seven months later, he was laid off. Um, he works in const the construction industry, which was hard hit in our state, and laid off in the middle of my treatment. Um, we had no choice but to get, then get benefits through COBRA, and that was $1,058 a month for 18 months. Um, we looked to the individual uh, market for private insurance. We did not qualify for Medicaid and had a disastrous meeting with a representative from a company who quoted us $2,000 plus a month for me only. Um, you feel, in a sense, tainted. Um, being a woman should not be a pre-existing condition. Uh, it, it's hard to describe the stress of going through a catastrophic illness and the side effects of the treatment that you receive and worrying about the insurance mess at the same time and how you're going to make it through as a family. Um, the light on the horizon that we thought was the North Carolina high risk pool. I currently pay into that $400 a month. I have a $5,000 deductible. However, my oncologist's office does not, is not a member, is not affiliated with that program. Um, and uh, the latest update is that I just got word that there is an exclusionary policy uh, with the high-risk pool for the genetic testing that my doctors want me to have, which would possibly impact my treatment and my future course, um, as well as the futures of my children. Uh, and the final um, highlight is that recently my husband and I did our taxes and as we sat down and saw everything in black and white, we saw that very nearly half our income went to uh, health-related costs. And that is just for me. My children are on the North Carolina CHIP program, and my husband is uninsured. So the bottom line is the reality. If you're healthy, you get insurance. If you get sick, there's no option. You then have a pre-existing condition. There's no place to turn. Um, insurance should help everyone, including those who need it. Um, there's no real option in the private market for, for people with pre-existing conditions. So I urge and uh, urge strongly that Congress make the humane choice for our country and pass this um, health care reform bill. Uh, plain and simple, it's a broken system and it continues to leave a trail of families who fi whose finances have been decimated by the system. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Speaker Pelosi. Mr. Hoyer has to go away on business. Thank you very much. Mr. Hoyer has to go away on business. Thank you very much. I'm not finishing. Thank you very much, Carolyn, for sharing your personal story with us. Thank you, Ed Morris. Thank you, Kim Moldovsky. Thank you, Stella Johnson, for your eloquence. And speaking for many people in our country. We talk about reduction of the deficit, putting money in the bank. There are many stories, millions of stories in the story bank that talk about how people have been denied coverage, have coverage canceled, have covers, uh, coverage rescinded when they're practically on the gurney in the way, on the way into the operating room. But Carolyn was speaking about women, and I want to uh, say something about that as well, and what this legislation is about. Beginning of her remarks, she said to the effect that being a woman is a pre-existing condition. I will go further than that and just say, if you're of childbearing age, 
and you've had children, as I did. I had five children in six years. They told me I was a poor risk. I thought I was showing my strength <laughs> off the policy. <laughs> if you can't have children, you have a pre-existing condition. If you have a C-section, you have a pre-existing condition. If you have, are a victim of domestic abuse, you have a pre-existing condition. This legislation ends that. And it ends discrimination based on gender as well as pre-existing conditions. Women are charged now nearly 50% more than men for the same coverage. With reform in place, it will be illegal for insurance companies to use gender ratings. No one will be denied coverage or charged higher premiums because of a pre-existing condition, and that includes having a C-section section or being a victim of domestic violence. This legislation ensures the coverage, treatment, and care women need ensures that that is affordable and accessible. Fewer than half of women can obtain affordable insurance through a job. Fewer than half of women can obtain affordable coverage insurance through a job. More than half of women reported daily need, de delaying needed care due to high cost compared with 39% of men. This eliminates co-pays and deductibles in many cases for recommended preventive services, and uh, that's an important part of this. So here we are. We believe that the best initiative that we can take to reduce the deficit is to pass health care reform. The best initiative that we can take to strengthen Medicare and improve care and benefits for our seniors, closing the donut hole, is to pass health care reform. And we believe, excuse me, we believe that the best initiative we can take to create jobs, strengthen our economic security, is health care reform. The best initiative we can take to keep America competitive, to have our economy energized by people following their aspirations, taking risks, being entrepreneurial, but not hampered by not having health insurance, is to pass health care reform for the health and well-being of American people, for the fiscal soundness of America's budget, for seniors, for our young people, for women, for small businesses, and for competitiveness. We will make history and we will make progress by passing this legislation. Uh, later today, it will be up, excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> it's water. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be pleased to take any questions you have. Madam Speaker. Speaker, you have the largest Democratic majority in more than a generation. Why are you having such a hard time getting 216 votes? And if this is going to show, this vote is going to show, whose side you're on, whose side are those Democrats who are voting no? Whose side are they on? Well, let me say this. First of all, as I've said to you before, every vote around here is a heavy lift. How many times have you come, whether it was the budget, whether it was energy, whatever it is, every vote is a heavy lift. We have great diversity in our caucus. We don't have a rubber stamp Congress or a rubber stamp caucus. So we have our full airing of issues. Members want to see this, uh, the figures. They want to see what the Senate will do. Uh, we, uh, we like the dynamic in our caucus. But it does show also, uh, in the second part, it also does show uh, the impact of a, a campaign of misrepresentation, of fear that is going out there. There is no limit to what the other side will do to protect the insurance companies. And that is what came out, I think, at the, president, the president's summit when he said that he came out and said the difference is you're for regulating the insurance companies or you're for protecting the insurance companies. We're for regulating them. That's speaker, speaker, speaker. It's over $900 billion. Right. Can you tell us off the top of your head how is this is going to be paid for? Is this a surtax on the wealthy, Cadillac well, that plans, be a, Medicare, yeah. payroll tax? How is it going to be paid for? Just right. a few bullet points on that. Well, what I want you to do is to go to the website in about a, a, an hour or so. Later today, the, the uh, uh, report will be complete from the CBO and the, our analysis of it, and we will put it up on the website. Uh, but uh, basically, most of the legislation, the biggest, one biggest uh, um, covering of the cost comes from cutting waste, fraud, and abuse, largely in Medicare. Over $500 billion comes from that. 
The remainder of the money come from a number of things. Uh, one of the victories that we have in the House is that our members did not like the excise tax uh, on insurance plans. We thought it hurt the middle class. There was a debate about that, so the higher end of that is left in the plan. I call it the Platinum Rolls-Royce piece of it. Uh, and the rest will be covered by um, uh, uh, me Medicare fee on unearned income. Medicare fee on unearned income. No, Medicare fee on unearned, unearned income, whatever category that is. The, the uh, third piece of it is that there will be, um, uh, uh, well, it's not a pay for, it's about coverage. You have to look.